You're watching Children of Courage, the impacts of social media. Hi, I'm Ava and I'm 15 years old. This is the third show in our Children of Courage series called Impact of Social Media. I wanted to talk with some teens about social media. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. On the one hand, there are so many positive elements about these social platforms, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, or Snapchat to name a few. There are some really creative people who we can be inspired by knowledgeable people who we can learn from, and even professional people who can lead us to job opportunities. And all of these amazing opportunities can be reached on a global scale. Clearly, social media is a useful tool, but there's a dark side to it too, and I think it's something that is worth examining, especially when it comes to young people. Welcome to another episode of Children of Courage. Today we're going to talk about social media. For adults, uh, social media is kind of a, a, a new thing and, and often misunderstood, but for a younger generation, it's a game changer. We're here with Ava, my co-host. Hi. Hi. <laughs> how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. So social media, it's, um, I get lost on it. <laughs> it's not something that I do well, um, but your generation has grown up with it. So. Tell me a little bit about why you chose this topic. I think just being in the, the high school environment and, you know, being constantly surrounded by, like, different apps like TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, like, all those, and even sometimes Twitter, um, it's always, I feel like I count, like, five times Instagram is mentioned or six times Snapchat is mentioned. Um, and I think it has really been used for a way for people to connect, especially at my, like, younger age, like, sending a DM or a direct message to a friend or I think the most important thing or why it's so popular is it's a way of connecting and even though like you see your friend every day or I think and even it's just an important it's an important tool to connect with others like outside of your of your uh, outside of your school or you know kids from other schools or kids even from different countries like it's really I think it's yeah wow yeah so it's got some positive things for people yeah. in your age community. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not always positive, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> um, we hear a lot of stories um, uh, about things that just didn't go right. You know, there's the, uh, the Dayline series about social media and how it's yeah. used to prey on younger people. Um, how do you feel about yeah. that? I just, I just feel like even if you if you have like a private account on Instagram, if you're, if you're younger, you're still gonna get those weird DMs like, hey, you know, wanna, you know, wanna send a regiment. And, and there's no way you can escape that, but I think the most important thing is just if you're getting a social media app. Obviously, talk to your parents first, ask like, hey, to your parents, like, hey, can I get this? And just have a conversation first before you kind of jump in. And especially, it depends on what age, because because kids are literally getting on social media like it's eight, nine, like for me, sort of young to kind of, and it's, it's really, it really is sad that especially younger girls, specifically younger girls are being like preyed on when they're getting DMs or getting comments or getting hate comments. And it's like, it's, it's just really sad. There's nothing you can really do about it. It's just gonna happen. It's just gonna happen on every app. And it's really sad, but you have to push through and you have to know understand your self-worth and it's not and it's not like that like oh my gosh self-love I love myself it's 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 really is self-worth when you're going into seeing 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 images of like attractive people and you're comparing them it's like you have to go in with the mindset that you are perfect and, and you are beautiful and these people they're they're perfect and beautiful too and you both can coexist as being perfect and beautiful it's yeah. an awesome way to look at it <laughs> um, let's bring it a little closer to home yeah. um, Cyberbullying by people you know. Um, yeah. how, 
Why do you think that happens? It, it really? Ooh. I feel like it really is about insecurity. I mean, why would someone just be like, oh, I'm going to pick on this person today just because I feel like that. No one in their brain, or at least I assume, no one in their brain is going through like, oh, I'm just going to be mean. It really is about insecurity and it's really about jealousy and it's really about even, even connection, which goes within the jealousy thing. You know, you're hanging out with a friend and you see on Instagram that your friend is hanging out with a, another group of friends that you don't really know that well or you were like, hey, why didn't you invite me? And you kind of get jealous. And so maybe at school you might talk about that person like, hey, I saw that you were hanging out with these people. Why are you hanging out with them? They're weird. This is just an example. And even like going back and forth on like DMs and like talking about a person. Like I've had an experience where I was literally hanging out with a friend and she was like, and she was like DMing um, her friend and I saw about this other girl that we were hanging out with like oh I don't even know why she's here and stuff like why did she like invite her and stuff and I think social media is just another loophole to to really be really be mean to other people and it's yeah how can you protect yourself from that I really I really don't I mean when I've been on social media I get the I feel like I haven't really experienced like cyberbullying and stuff because especially since I have a small following account and I have a small follower account that I'm only like with my friends and like I'm on their private stories or they're on my private stories and stuff and I haven't really seen that but I know there have been a few girls who have you know kind of experienced like cyberbullying like um I guess like this example is this girl she has like a they're called like spam accounts and so that's like for very close friends and so she followed it and the girl requested and the girl was like talking sort of talking behind her back but not realizing that the girl follows her and she could see all the stories and she was like saying like oh my friends this and my friends that and she's like so well obviously calling her like bad names and and things like that and it and you can never really escape from it and it's not going to be some like random person who's like you're so mean. like it's going to be people you know and there is, I feel like there's no real way to escape it. I think it's, like I said before, it's all about the mindset. Like you, you are nice, you are perfect, you are, you are worth something, you're, and you shouldn't let those people, you know, their words mean anything about your character. So social media kind of inundates you with information. It's a constant yeah. thing, you know. I mean, I look at my social media accounts, I don't have very many. Um, <laughs> But I look at the few that I have, and there's this constant info of, of information coming in. And it's everything from what my friends are doing to what's happening around the world in the yeah. Ukraine. How, how, do you, how do you take all that information in? Sometimes I don't. <laughs> I mean, like you said, there's just so much out there. And when you pull up your phone, when you're taking like a break, and there's just like, oh, there's this horrible, this, this horrible thing. Oh, this is a great thing. Oh, and you, like, you see your DMs, and people are like saying hi and stuff. And, it's sometimes, I guess you would say, sensory overload. I don't know if that's the right word. And yeah. sometimes I just have to put it away and be like, okay. And like, I might pick out a, one thing about like, oh, there's something about Ukraine. Let me go online and research it. Like I kind of, I guess I would say like dissect the information. If there's something in the five seconds I saw that caught my eye, I'll like try to research it extensively instead of using just what's on like social media, I guess, like using media outlets. To you said something very interesting. You said five seconds. Um, yeah. Social media has really shortened the attention span of people. Um, yeah. It's shortened the news cycle. It's um, really given us just this very brief glimpse of things that are going on. Um, yeah. how, do you feel that you're getting the full story when you when you go on social media? Definitely not. I've seen a, I've seen a lot of posts about like you know like political events that have happened, and then it's kind of like and people in the comments would be like, oh, you need to like double check that again I don't know if that's right and then people down in the comments will be like posting like links to actual like trusted sources so I think and it's like so I don't know it's just like so bad that you have to like constantly be scrolling through comments to find correct information and that correct information can't just be at an access you have to do extensive research to kind of find out the real truth so mm -hmm. that's a little bit of a skill then that you've acquired through social media Sort of, yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So the information filters that you use, do you use them based on um, what your friends are responding to or do you kind of go out on your own and look for stuff sometimes? I would like to say I go out on my own, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I sort of have like some like political views, so I kind of go to news sources that kind of 
fit that ideal, but I also go to the opposite end of the spectrum, where like sort of like independent kind of news organizations, and so kind of having. I mean, even though I don't agree with some of the stuff that's saying that they have said, I still have to look at it and kind of, you know, compare and contrast. Apply your own but, filters. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Ava, thank you so much. Uh, this is a very heavy and weighty topic. Um, there's a lot to talk about, so um, we will um, hopefully have an opportunity to talk more. Yes. Um, <laughs> and you're, I guess you're going to go out and interview some people in your age group about this and, and kind of get their input as well. Yeah. Thank That's you exciting. so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. These days, social media is the landscape of our social lives. We can't escape the magnitude of its influence on our social, psychological, and emotional lives. It has a very unforgiving and relentless nature. What I mean is when a rumor or story is spread over social media, it doesn't matter whether it's a truth or a lie. It's like a wildfire. When it catches, it spreads over hundreds to thousands to millions of people very fast, and it is really devastating whether it's positive or negative for the people involved. Hi, Graciela too. Thank you so, so much for being here on a very special episode of Children of Courage. Thank you for having me. So, how old are you and what grade are you in? I'm 17 years old and I'm a junior in high school, so I'm in 11th grade. That's so cool. <laughs> what do you like to do in your free time? Um, I don't have too much free time because of school and work and track and other extracurriculars, but when I do have free time, I usually just either hang out with friends or watch like a TV show. Like right now, I'm watching Grey's Anatomy, but just chill stuff like that. I yeah. heard that's a good show. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, you're here to participate in social media. So what platforms are you currently using? I'm currently, the main ones that I'm using, I would say, I use... Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, and I'm on Twitter. I don't have that many friends on Twitter, but like I look at Twitter, so. That makes sense. <laughs> have you done anything on any of these platforms that you're really proud of? I don't think, not that I can think of, nothing like major, but I mostly use the platforms just to like connect with friends and like sometimes I'll repost something that like, like social justice related yeah. and stuff that I like believe in or that I'm like passionate about, so that, I'm slightly proud of, but I haven't done anything major. So I think yeah. doing something like that in the future would be yeah. helpful. I mean, but. I think obviously just spreading awareness is yeah. really important too. Yeah. And what is your favorite social media app out of the um, ones you listed? I think my favorite would probably be TikTok just because I think it's just the most entertaining one and the algorithm yeah. is just very like curated for me and it's more, yeah. I don't know, it just feels more like personable and real because it's just, yeah. and there's not like, really like specific there's not just like a set number of influencers yeah. like there's a lot of influencers and they're all very like just regular people you would meet off the street yeah. so it's very relatable so I think it's just entertaining relatable that's, that's really I like good it. Yeah. yeah I would definitely agree <laughs> <laughs> I guess we will go just a little bit deep so I have to ask you if you're comfortable yes. with answering is was there anything that you did on any of these platforms that you were slightly embarrassed or you were just not proud of um, I think just, this is probably like a typical experience, yeah. but like when, like I can think of like three years ago when I was posting pictures on like Instagram, yeah. I feel like looking back now, I wouldn't be as like proud of those just cause like there was something wrong with them or I looked bad or like whatever it is. Like I just yeah. didn't, just stuff that I would like look back on and like be like, oh, like I wish I didn't post that, but nothing too embarrassing, just kind of like archived posts, I would say. <laughs> yeah. But I don't, haven't done anything really embarrassing, which I'm grateful for, That's but just good. little things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's very hard, I think, to get in like the world of social media, like posting stuff or saying stuff, like it's kind of tricky territory. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so I guess, do you think, well, general question, do you think that social media is more positive or do you think it's more dangerous? Or I think it depends on how you use it and what mindset you like go into the app or like start using the app yeah. with. So if you're going into it wanting to compare yourself to people or like having that mindset of yeah. being like, oh, I want to be like these people, that can be kind of toxic, I guess. But if you're doing it in a way, or if you're, you have the outlook of like getting inspiration or like having something like to be entertained by, like I think it can be positive. So it just depends on, and sometimes it's not 
controllable. I think sometimes like you might be having a bad day and going on Instagram and seeing someone that's really pretty that you can't relate to for some reason like that might not be good for you and that might be have like a negative impact on you. Yeah. But like the next day, like if you see someone like, I don't know, like cooking something really good and you want to do it, like it's inspiring yeah. and stuff like that. So I think it, I think it can work both ways. I can't, I can't give an answer as to which one, yeah. like if it's more positive or more negative, but I think it just depends on how you are doing in general. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. Yeah. That is, that's really great. <laughs> that's a very thorough answer. Thank you. <laughs> so do you have any suggestions that you think should be implemented um, on social media for safety? Um, nothing. I can't think of any very specific yeah. like things to implement right now, but I guess in general, like what helps is just having not disclaimers. It's a very, it's a very big word, but just kind of like raising a, awareness in a way of how like, oh, not everything you see is real or like this isn't always like really authentic. Just like having some sort of reminder of that for especially like kids, teens, and also just adults, like people in general, like it's just important to know that yeah. like not everything you see is like completely authentic. Yeah. So I think just remembering that is important. I think it's especially yeah. great with, you know, with social media and photoshopping and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and like you were just mentioning about people like comparing themselves, I think disclaimer or even just like sort of being like open on social media, like, oh, I might have like photoshopped this a little bit or edited a little bit. Yeah. I, I think that might help people with comparison. But yeah. I guess just one of the biggest things that I have, or I guess sort of issues about social media is the sexualization of young girls, women, and teens. And I feel like that's, it's really sad. I feel like even like, I know like Instagram kind of has their own algorithm different than TikTok and stuff. And I'll see like videos of these young girls, like, you know, I guess like posting sort of provocative photos and stuff. And I guess, what is your opinion on that? Like, because I feel like there's, body positivity within that, which is really, really amazing. But then there's also creepy people who are like, hey, wanna DM me or something, you know? So what is your opinion on kind of, I feel like there's no restriction? Yeah, I that. feel like it's it's a big topic to think about because on like how you said, like on the one hand, it's like, you want people to have the freedom to post what they want and yeah. wear what they want. But also there might be people that have not good intentions. Yeah. So I think, I don't know, not that there should be like a certain age limit on like what people can post because I feel like that that has problems in and of itself. Yeah. But I think just making sure that especially like younger girls and younger people in general just are aware of what like might possibly be happening and also yeah. just making sure that the apps and the companies and organizations themselves can just do what they can to restrict people like that and just like yeah. limit the amount of like I don't know, harm that could be done to younger people, but I think, I don't know, I feel like I think social media can be a good place for younger people to just feel more confident in like themselves and their bodies and stuff like that. And I think it's definitely a problem that like they get over sexualized and things like that. Yeah. But I feel like if the apps themselves do something to address that, so that way they can leave um, just the kids and like the younger girls themselves to just find their personal freedom of expression and stuff yeah. like that. But also making sure that everyone is aware, like that they should be safe and things like that. Yeah. yeah. And I guess regarding TikTok, because we kind of were talking about influencers and stuff. And what is your opinion on these influencers? Because I've kind of heard mixed things. People are like, "Oh, Charlie D'Amelio and Dixie D'Amelio, they're just dancing and they're not really doing anything." And then there's other people who are, I guess, you consider um, like influencers, and they talk about mental health. So there's kind of a variety of. What do you think about these influencers? What's your opinion? I think. In general, it's a really good opportunity for regular people to, I don't know, like get farther like in the industry yeah. and in social media and stuff like that. So on that hand, it's good. But on the other hand, I think it ties into all of the biases and prejudices that people either Im like implicitly have, I guess. Yeah. So I heard a lot of talk about like, there weren't as many like really popular black influencers. And I think yeah. because just because of like the world that we live in and like the racism that's like implemented in our society and even like things like homophobia, like that's yeah. all, that all plays a role in who gets like pushed to the top. Like I feel like we have like a lot of like predominantly like white cis, like hetero yeah. people that are like really big influencers. So I think yeah. just, and I don't think we should place the blame on like 
those people. I think it's just creating awareness and making sure that we're that the platforms themselves are like giving equal opportunity and not playing yeah. into the like biases that the general public might have. Yeah. Um, and just making sure that everyone has like an equal opportunity to like spread their voice and share content that makes them happy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, that's really nice. <laughs> I think I guess going off of that when we're talking about influencers, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, all these influencers, they're just like pretty girls and they're getting millions of views. Like, I guess I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, what is your opinion on that? Because I've, I've noticed too, like all the people like who on my like for you page or whatever are like all like little white girls yeah. with pretty blue eyes and they're dancing and it's like, you're so pretty, you're so pretty. And, and what's your opinion on that? Because I see a lot of hate comments. Like, why do you, why do you get so many likes? Like you're just dancing and, and you didn't like earn any of this like, like yeah this. I think well I think I don't like those comments because it's not their fault yeah. that they're like getting a lot of likes and whatever I think it's just like in general it's it's a difficult it's a difficult question <laughs> but I think it just plays into a lot of the beauty standards that there are right now and just mm -hmm. kind of perpetuating it like oh if you look a certain way like you'll get to you'll get farther in your career and your social media yeah. career and whatever you want to do it's just like pretty privilege. I've seen a lot of that yeah. on TikTok. Yeah. But I think I don't know, I think the more we raise awareness on that and like the more everyone that uses TikTok and even like people not using TikTok, like just being aware of that and like yeah. being aware of who we're pushing up, I think that's really important. But I think I don't know, like I feel like if they're given the opportunity to have like a bigger platform then I'm all for them having a bigger platform. Yeah. But also I can see why it's harmful to like people that don't fit those like really limited restricted beauty standards so I think again like going back to what I said before like making sure everyone has like everyone has equal opportunity to yeah. like get a bigger platform if that yeah, makes sense. That's really yeah. amazing yeah and I guess just yeah it kind of reminds me of you know just I'm trying to think of like female directors or the one that comes to mind is Sofia Coppola and I think I think film media TV social media is really is really really like I feel like it's a really important place for women to be like heard and I think even still I feel there's like a lack of rep representation of like women of color and stuff and I guess to you how important is it to see like women of color or women like you or girls like you who are going to similar issues like being seen on film on social media it's, like seeing posts about yeah it's extremely important like I never like when I was little I never really thought about it mm -hmm. but I'm like I'm Mexican Asian um like kind of white but I'm like a mix and I never yeah. saw myself growing up and then I found like one of my friends is like has a similar like ethnicity as me and yeah. when I felt that connection it was like I never experienced it before and like imagining like what it would feel like to see someone like me like on television would be like I don't know and I feel like when there is representation it makes you feel like you can be like them and you have more opportunities like you see yeah. someone reaching their goals and you're like oh I can do that too so I think just it's just really important and it makes it gives a person less limits or it like makes them yeah. feel like they have more freedom to be what they want because if you see someone that you can identify with doing something then you can do it yourself if that, or you feel like yeah. you can do it yourself and you have more confidence and faith in yourself yeah. so I think it's really important that we especially with social media like we use because social media like amplifies a lot more voices than previously like in previous years so I think it's just really important to use like utilize social media in that aspect and given the ability that we have using it like just to promote like more representation of people of color of the lgbtq plus community like yeah. things like that just that we people who identify like with those communities can also feel like they have a chance to yeah, yeah. oh that's really sweet <laughs> and i guess just going off um what is your opinion on people like sharing their polit political views on social media because i'm when I think of that, I always think of Twitter and yeah. the whole everything on Twitter is kind of crazy. It is. Yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's really good because it opens up a lot of discussions and it opens up a lot of things that people might not have thought of before. Like I think I like I personally like learn like I love going on the Twitter like trending page because <laughs> I like seeing what people are talking about yeah. and then I see like the different views that people have. But it's also there's like there's the good side of that and there's also the bad side where people might be spreading like misinformation and yeah. things like that and that can get that can get technical and difficult but <laughs> i think it's it's good for opening discussions but it's also problematic yeah yeah
I definitely agree with that. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for being here. We had a really, really great discussion, and I definitely will take a bunch of your thoughts home. Thank you about. so much. It was great yeah. being here. Thank you. Even if you're just an observer of social media stories, you can't escape the psychological and emotional impact of them. What happens is that people pick sides in social conversations or situations. Because we all need validation, we tend to follow what's popular more than because we really believe in something. Hi, Griffin. Hi. Um, so thank you so much for you know coming on the show, Children of Courage, mm -hmm. and just participating in this interview slash conversation. Yeah. So yeah, um, I guess what I wanted to talk about is social media. That's obviously a very important topic, but also kind of like spicy topic. Yeah. It's like it's there's a negative side and a good side. So I guess I just want to kind of have a conversation about that and hear about your views, your opinions, and yeah. Yeah. So I guess um, maybe first starting out about social media um what is the i guess your general opinion of social media i don't like it um i think that there can be pros of it but for me personally as someone who's very much like compares myself to other people yeah. a lot it's bad for me and it definitely profits off my anxiety yeah. um yeah what do you think of it um i feel like i have mixed feelings about it just because Honestly, I feel good like when I, you know, when I do have a post or I put something on my story and people mm -hmm. like that story or they reply and that's cool. But I feel like at the end of the day, like it's that split second of joy and I feel like that split second of like, oh my gosh, someone's like paying attention to me and mm -hmm. what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter and that yeah. kind of like little happiness I feel, like it just goes by so fast. Yeah. And I think also with social media, or specifically Instagram, I do a lot of like DMing and talking mm -hmm. to people. And that's kind of where like I meet people and stuff. But yeah. like more and more, I've been like that was my main source of like making friends, like talking mm -hmm. to people, you know, finding, seeing who follows who, and you know, talking to them and replying to their stories and talking about music and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And when I actually meet them in person, there's totally a, like a completely different, yeah. I guess, interact. I'm kind of going on a tangent here. No, but, no, that makes um, sense. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I think the difference of, um you know, talking to that person online and meeting them in person, I guess. I think yeah. specifically Instagram and social media is kind of like this mask and you can kind of act this certain way. And I think also... Yeah. Just have like a completely different persona. Exactly, yeah. And I feel like also when I'm talking to people, I'm more, I feel like more confident mm -hmm. to kind of like say stuff or open up. And yeah. when I meet them in person, it's like, we're just sitting there like, hey, so we talked about like smashing pumpkins. Like, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just, yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I, there's this genuine connection that's like, not just over texts and DMs exactly. and stuff. It's just so much, it feels much more real. Yeah. And definitely like, since there's just more time to actually talk and like, not have to think about what you're gonna say as much. You just exactly. say and can be your full self. Yeah, exactly. And especially what you said about, you know, thinking about what you're saying first. Like literally when I talk to people, I'll be like, should I say? Okay, or should I say K? Should I capitalize a K? Say KK. Yeah, or I say like I don't know. Mm -hmm. I like, just I stress out so much yeah. about it, and I feel like a lot of people do, and maybe you do too. No, yeah, and it's I just like, like why do I care? Like why do I yeah. care so much about how I'm being perceived? But yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I guess another question, or kind of topic I want to bring up is about um, maybe casual Instagram. I don't mm -hmm. know if you heard that saying. But there are people who will post pictures, like do, they'll do photo dumps and post mm -hmm. like random pictures, maybe like a zoomed up picture of a plant to kind of seem more like, oh, I don't really care about social media. I kind of like don't really care. I'll just post whatever and stuff versus like people who really put like attention to detail. Like they have mm -hmm. they have the typical like day at the beach post. They have the typical like first day of school. I don't know if that makes sense, mm -hmm. but what do you think about casual Instagram? Do you think it's more formulaic than it appears to be or... Um, I think definitely. I think if you are putting, like, the thought into being, like, so I don't want to seem like I yeah. focus on Instagram a lot, but then you really are. It's not that different. Yeah. You're just trying to come up with a different persona, being like, I'm not like the other people. But if that makes you happy with what you post, then just post what you want to post. But I think that it can be kind of formulaic. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I guess another sort of topic is, I guess, how should I say this? The aesthetics of Instagram. There are, you know, certain people who kind of gravitate more to this like edgy kind of, you know, posts mm -hmm. and, and stuff on their Instagram. So I guess talk about, if you want to talk about aesthetics and how that. Yeah. I mean, definitely in quarantine, since I was bored, I was, like, getting into that, being like, what's my aesthetic? And, like, it's such a dumb, like, statement. Like, you're more than just being edgy. Like, you're more than just being cottagecore or dark academia or whatever. And I feel like so many people, especially when people just got bored in quarantine, that just builds and builds. Um, and it's really stupid, since you should just be who you are and just be a mix of things and like you shouldn't have to think about it if this is like what you're gonna post on your story or whatever is aligning with your aesthetic it's just like really lame and yeah. like yeah it puts a lot of pressure but yeah. I don't think it's good yeah I definitely agree with that and I think I've also kind of done some stuff I was like like what song will appeal to the like two people that watch my stories and like and it goes into this whole overthinking again and yeah. about how you're being perceived and things like that and so yeah. it's just a dangerous kind of thing because it leads into other and I guess also one thing I just want to mention is like when we're talking about like certain aesthetics and stuff like mm -hmm. I feel like sort of on my Instagram page I feel like I have sort, sort of a certain aesthetic and then mm -hmm. when I like come up to people and they like see my personality I'm more bubbly and I'm not as reserved they're kind of like mm, this is not who you portray to be I guess and so mm -hmm. I think that's just a little frustrating and yeah, also definitely. just like, if you want to add on to that, but, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's just like, it's just so exhausting, dude, to try to be like this one type of presence on social media. It just can get really draining for you, and also, it just, if it doesn't do any good for you and like, your mental health and perception of yourself and stresses you out that much to be like, okay, is this me, then I'd say definitely, like... That's what I did. I just I'm taking a break off Instagram yeah. right now. That's yeah. definitely something I need to do too. Because <laughs> the more and more I talk about this, I'm like, I'm doing. Wait a second. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This is exactly what the app <laughs> wants me to do. Exactly. And I'm, I'm like following. Exactly. And I'm like, I can't play into this, and I. Yeah. And yeah, and I guess we could talk a little bit about Snapchat. We can go back to Instagram, mm -hmm. and I know you don't really use that a lot, but yeah. um. I guess just like when talking with friends and stuff, like we'll be in a version class and we'll be like, guess what happened on Snapchat? Like I was talking to this dude and it turned out he was 30 years old and wanted to meet up. Like that's still a thing. So I guess, mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to talk about a little bit about. Yeah, I yeah. don't have Snapchat. I had it for like a week. Yeah. But then, I don't know, it just felt weird. Something just random people I didn't even know that was like talking to them and it's mm -hmm. like, wait, this is just fake and I don't like it. And the people who I do and would talk to those staying me on those having to stay on the app yeah i could actually just text or dm or have an actual conversation with yeah rather than just like sending a picture of yourself with text yeah and especially with the whole picture thing like i think i don't know if anyone else like thought about this with snapchat is there's this thing called streaks and trying mm -hmm. to like send as many photos or videos or whatever to like build your score, which is also weird too. Like, yeah. Anyway, it just but, all plays um, into the being perceived. Thing. Exactly, and it's just like I remember, like maybe like a year ago or even less than a year ago, I would be like, I would see these people and they'd send streaks of like the beach, and I was like, is this a competition to like yeah. appear like you're doing more? Oh, they'll send a snap with friends, and I'm like, I'm literally watching a YouTube video of like Vox, like how <laughs> like. Fox is a good channel, by the way. But um, <laughs> and it's like I don't want to send a picture of that. And I think yeah. along with all these other social media apps, it's like the constant like panic, the pressure, and it's like I'm not gonna like for me at least I'm not gonna open this snap because I'm not in a really interesting and cool place. I'm just like mm -hmm. in my room doing whatever, and that's yeah. so I'll literally this is embarrassing. I'll wait 40 minutes, <laughs> send a snap of the spaghetti I'm eating, like, mm -hmm. and. Maybe that's me. Hopefully that's not just me, but... I think um, that's what everyone does. That's yeah. definitely what I did, too. Yeah, and it's just it's too so much then, stress yeah. and, and pressure and, and appealing. And like you said, like you don't even know these people. You're, yeah. you're just talking to them via text, and it's just... Yeah. I know you don't really use TikTok as often, mm -hmm. um, but I guess I kind of just wanted to talk about that and about, um, I guess, specifically 
the need to go viral or mm -hmm. or also the intent of why people post videos is it to yeah. to kind of get that self-validation and get that viral or do or people genuinely post because they just want to show their friends um i think definitely depends on the person mm -hmm. and also like if if you have a private account, you're obviously more than likely just to be posting for yeah. your friends. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of TikToks that I see are just like trying to be viral. And like they act like they're not trying to go viral, but they are. And that's like what we feel like a lot of people really do, understandably, mm -hmm. want for that validation of other people. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to circle back to Instagram or if you have any other things you want to share, but. Um, another thing about TikTok, yeah. I think it's been less toxic for me than other social media apps because you can make what you want of it the most. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, I just have a ton of videos of people baking bread and I'm like, okay, this is fun. Um, <laughs> since I always like try to engage with that content or like content about movies and that kind of stuff, I think that's one of the easier ones to get into stuff that's more specifically for you. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, and I didn't really think about it like that. It's like with certain apps, you can kind of control what you view and like the purpose of using it. Versus like Instagram, you literally open the thing, you're flooded with posts and stories, and like, yeah, look at this and look at that and look what I did and look what I got and how much time I spend on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have on my phone. I have a self timer, which I think limits like two or three hours mm -hmm. and then I also have like a thing on my phone where it doesn't give me notifications so I purposely have to like go into that it's not so my screen time I think it's like two hours and 40 minutes sometimes it's three hours and 40 minutes but it's kind of around that range mm -hmm. but um, also a thing with turning notifications off it's like I'd rather have the notifications on because the issue is when I see my phone it doesn't have anything on the screen. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, so no one's talking to me. So I'm always opening the apps oh, up yeah. and seeing if anyone has like, if there's like a notification, if someone has messaged me. And mm -hmm. it's that constant thing where I always need to check and check and check and mm -hmm. check and check. And I think the more times, I think I've had this, the disabled the notifications for actually, I want to say a year, less than a year. And the more time I'm like, I'm on my phone, like my screen time on my phone is mm -hmm. more than I had it with my notifications. Exactly. And it's just like, and also it goes with this whole comparison thing where it's like, when I don't see my phone having notifications, I'll be like, oh, well, it's because I turned them off. Like, it's not because mm -hmm. I don't have friends. And it's like, I don't even need to justify, I don't need to explain. Yeah. But it's always that, that constant, like, feel of validation. Like, do I have friends? Like, if no one's mm -hmm. talking to me right now, then like, I have no friends, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. If you want to know. Yeah, I mean, I just deleted Instagram on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I do occasionally check to see if I have an inbox mm -hmm. um, on my computer and mm -hmm. other devices. Mm -hmm. And then when I see that I do have, like, a lot of messages, I'm like, oh, yay, <laughs> I have friends. Yeah. But then it's like, that doesn't really equate at all. And it's just, it's just all so fake. Yeah. Um, how has your mental health been impacted by social media? I guess I want to say impacted for the for the worst. Honestly, I mean, I feel like when we have this conversation, the more and more I'm talking about it and thinking <laughs> about it, I was like, this does not yeah. sound good when I say it out loud. Like I pretend to be like, oh well, like posting and stories and people liking that and getting attention from that. It's like good. It's good for my mental health. I feel happy. I feel I feel great. I feel mm -hmm. like so amazing. But then, like I was saying earlier, it goes like that, and then I question like, okay that was cool for five seconds but what yeah. is and also even what is the purpose of social media like what mm -hmm. am i doing and then i think about like other people like some of my friends they don't have social media at all and i'm like and they're having fun like yeah. they're not constantly posting or constantly feeling the need and they actually yeah. seem happier than me yeah so it's like Definitely. yeah so i guess to circle back to your question i think it's gotten worse mm -hmm. i think it's gotten worse for um i guess that need or that pressure or, yeah that need to feel like you are liked or you're popular or you mm -hmm. have people talking to you and honestly after this interview I might take a break from it I might just loop it up and get it out um what about you how has your um mental health been impacted um from actually deleting Instagram I'm definitely a lot happier now that I don't have it um 
and like when I go to bed at night I try to read and stuff and like not just scrolling on social media and then not like mm-hmm. when the first thing that I wake up I just don't look at Instagram and it's definitely a lot nicer I feel like I'm spending my time better and I'm not always worried about how I compare to other people um, and still that whole like stupid perceived thing I haven't been <laughs> focusing on as much mm-hmm. so definitely a lot better now that I'm like on Instagram Sounds really nice. <laughs> what are the long-term effects of social media? Um, I mean, I still have, like we are just talking about, that whole thing of still being like, kind of like, oh, does this fit my vibe? <laughs> and um, like, does this bag, does my backpack seem Griffin <laughs> enough or something like that? Um, because that's just how people, I feel like usually, post is like, is this me? Um, and just constantly worrying about that, especially within our generation. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, for the long term, has kind of messed me up. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. I was just thinking about it right now. Um, I guess an example of that is, um, I guess with my social media, I try to present more edgy and so today, and I, you know, talk to my friends who were going to my school, like, and yesterday and stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, your Instagram is so cool. And I was like, thank you. And it's like, okay, today I need to present more edgy. Today I need to wear change. Today I need to wear this. Today I need to wear that. Mm-hmm. And even so far as like, I should change my wardrobe to that certain thing. And I'm like, why am I dictating my style and how I lead my life based on these people that I talked to two weeks ago who are coming to my school and if they're not going to like me for And it's like, it's, it's just deeper than like, oh, I want to appear cool. Like, yeah, there's something yeah. with me that I have to figure out. Yeah. Kind of got. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 And just like. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely like, when people do compliment me on social media, I'm always like, "Yay! Look at this! I got a like on my story. I got a like on my post." And then, I'm like, I don't even know this person. <laughs> like, why am I getting so hyped up? from this um yeah yeah. and then like i feel like sometimes people have been like like you have such a cool vibe and that kind of stuff or like i like your aesthetic which is so i hate i like feel like gagging after saying that it's so so cringy um then i'm like okay so what do you like about me and like do you actually like want to have a connection with me or just want to seem cool yeah, and you just said cool right now. What, what is the definition of cool? <laughs> no idea. Um, it's different for everyone, um, and yeah. I hate the word cool. The word cool should be abolished. <laughs> yeah, abolished. Yeah, and we were kind of talking about how um, describing someone is cool, yeah. and I guess in a way how shallow that is. There, there are yeah. other adjectives. There are, you are genuine, not you are cool. Mm-hmm. And we were kind of talking about like, what you just touched on right now about describing people as like who they really are and not yeah. how they look or they seem. Seem is different than who you are. I yeah, guess. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Pinterest. I don't know <laughs> if that's like really considered like <laughs> social media, but um, what, do you th- what do you think about Pinterest? I like Pinterest. Um, that kind of goes against what I've been saying, <laughs> since that's one of the most, like, what is, is this for me? Do I like this? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the reason why I like that one is just because, like, you're not really comparing, at least the way that I use it, I'm not comparing myself to other people's, since it's very much for you. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I have a board of, like, cool clothing that I think that I like, um, and like recipes that I want to try and that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that it can be used really badly if you see it as like a way to compare yourself to other people's Pinterests. Um, but for me, just using it for my own personal benefit, it's been yeah. fun. I, I definitely agree with that because I feel like Pinterest, I think it's harder for you to access other mm-hmm. people. There's not like a section in Pinterest where it's like, let's look what other people have done, or at least if you, you know, have friends who aren't, it might give you a notification, like, Lou, Kristen found, and yada yada, but it's not so harsh yeah. that you're like, 
that picture looks cooler than what I saved or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I yeah. just don't really see the scenario of people like deliberately going through their following and seeing what people have. And yeah. Like, I should get that aesthetic, whatever mm -hmm. that is. Yeah, like, yeah. it's so. It's just so. Yeah, and it's less like based on what other people look like. Since again, you're not comparing yourself yeah. unless you like do the whole thing and you create your own pins. Yeah. Um, but like. So yeah, it's just less comparing yourself than Instagram and TikTok. And... Yeah. So, what about Be Real? Um, be Real? Yeah, it's a social media, well, they still call it a social media app, mm -hmm. but it's supposed to be like, it's one of those social media apps that isn't a social media app. Mm -hmm. You take a picture, it'll give you a notification, and you have to take a picture right then and there of what you're doing. So it'll take a picture of the camera facing you and then the camera facing out. So it's supposed to like encourage people to be their authentic self and like show their friends what they're doing and then show their friends. What what do you think about that? Um, I don't have it, but the way that Wesley, my brother, <laughs> described it, who's actually just like living at home, he said that it made him feel better about himself actually mm -hmm. because everyone his age um, is just doing nothing. <laughs> He's like, we're all having a boring life and we're not being fake about it. And maybe that's just the specific people that he's around. Yeah. But that sounds cool to me, like the opposite of Snapchat and yeah. what that's begun. Yeah, because I know a lot of people, especially at school, they're like, hey, can you take a picture for me really quickly? And then people mm -hmm. are like, is this a be real? And they're like, yeah. And so then it shows yeah. like a picture of them and then it shows a picture of the picture of the person taking mm -hmm. a photo and stuff. Um, I personally don't have it, but I have a lot of friends who have it and they say it's pretty fun. Um, I just really hope it doesn't turn into this thing where it's like, I need to get a be real where people are going to kind of, um, take it, take it and use it in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah. How has social media affected your relationship with family, friends? Um, again, worse. <laughs> um, at least with my family and like my parents, it goes with just the specific, my child is on his phone too much. Mm -hmm. Which, true. <laughs> um, and then with my friends, I'd say also negatively, since like, if my friends, if let's say that three friends are hanging out, and then in that hangout, mm -hmm. my friend posts a picture of the other friend, and then they don't post me on like their story or something, mm -hmm. I'm still kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I'm still kind of hurt. Um, so that has negatively affected yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I definitely, I can agree with that. I think you just touched on a perfect point about, you know, friends hanging out and maybe like not including their other friends. Yeah, definitely. It's just like seeing that other people are hanging out with you. It's like a constant, yeah. it's like never enough. Yeah, exactly. And you go into the spiral of like, why wasn't I yeah. like worthy enough of your, your social media page or your, yeah. your story that lasts for 24 hours, that's for a day and that's it. <laughs> And it's, we get we get so caught up and I'm definitely guilty of this. I get so mm -hmm. caught up in, in that. And I think also when, you know, people, classmates that I don't really talk to, but when they're all hanging out, there's a part of me that's like, like, I don't really talk to them, but like, mm -hmm. oh, they're hanging out and I'm just chilling at home. And, and, and I know we talk about like, I have such a boring days. life. I'm like, I have exactly. no friends. I'm like, just the spiraling exactly. that's caused by that exactly. is bad. It's really bad. So I guess in conclusion, social media, it really, it honestly depends. Yeah, it definitely you... depends on the person. Like, for example, my mom <laughs> using it, uses it in such a wholesome way. It's like, here's the new garden, and here's this cool flower that I'm looking at, and here's some cool food. And, like, she uses it in such a wholesome way. And, like, I think <laughs> that, like, it can be used um, in a good way if you're not just focusing on how you're being perceived and trying. Yeah. To just truly, genuinely, like, show what's going on with your friends. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. I just, you can use social media, but be careful and also be aware yeah. of how you feel after you use those apps. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much of for course. being a part of the interview. Yeah. Thank you for your, inviting me. Yeah, your responses are, like, crazy amazing. And I think they kind of <laughs> have opened up my eyes to kind of reflect. So, I'm glad. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Because social media thrives on popularity, 
Most people on social media, and especially teens, are not using the platforms as a way to reflect in any meaningful way. It's become a platform for shaming people into groupthink, to create a population of followers. This is especially devastating for teens because we're all really just learning who we are and about all the things that'll help us to develop our backbone, our values in life. Imagine that our view of ourselves is contingent on what other people think of us. Then who are we really living for? Does a teen develop a sense of self or a sense of how to become someone else through social media? I really wanted to find out what the prevailing perspective of social media was for teens. A positive tool or a dangerous social experiment. I hope that these interviews are enlightening. Most importantly, I hope they help kids develop their own points of view. Thank you so much for watching Children of Courage.